at, I'd like to introduce my guest to you, uh, and that is um, G- a candidate for the GOP nomination for Lieutenant Governor, uh, Sue Loudon. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, everybody. Nice to be here this morning. Um, and as uh, happened yesterday, you called in while I was talking to Mark Hutchison. You called in at uh, 8.35 yesterday. So if Mark Hutchison wants to call in at 8.35 today and spend five minutes with us, he's more than welcome to do so. And I made that clear with him yesterday and with you. And so I just want to be fair all the way around. Well, I only called in because I know that uh, you had requested that we were on together and uh, to debate the issues together. And I only called in because he refused to do that. And he was on yesterday, and I wanted equal time. Okay. Well, you got it. I'm here. This is your your, your right. time. And again, he's welcome to call in at 835. He knows the number. Uh, good to have you here. So, um, all right. I'm going to ask you a lot of the questions I some I asked him yesterday. Okay. Uh, why, why are you running for this at all? I mean, he was already in it. He was already endorsed by the governor. You jump in, and now the two of you are going back and forth and back and forth. Why are you doing this? I am in this race, and I brought the statute with me that shows the duties of lieutenant governor. I'm going to leave it with you in case you need it for your callers. But I feel I'm uniquely qualified for this job. Uh, You are the chairman uh, on tourism when you are the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. And, Alan, as you know, I've been in the tourism industry for more than 30 years. I've been the president of two hotels, including uh, one in Las Vegas and most recently one in Laughlin, Nevada. I've stepped away on a leave of absence on that for Mm -hmm. now, running for this job. I've brought tens of thousands of people to Clark County. I've been to the conventions all over the world. I know how to provide the contracts that fills the rooms, has the airlines filled and and bringing the people in, uh, putting the shows together. People just take tourism for granted, but it is a job. It's a full-time job. And we saw how we almost lost the rodeo this year. And and in a way, I'm glad that people realize that don't take these things for granted. You know, I was on the board of Las Vegas events I was vice chairman of that board when we re-signed the rodeo second time around. So I know how critical those negotiations are. And I know that it's important to bring special events here to town. We brought the rodeo to town. We brought the World Cup. We made a presentation in front of the International Olympic Committee. I brought Miss America here for eight years. I know what it takes. I won't need any on-the-job training. I'm going to start bringing tourists all over the state day one Full-time, by the way. I'm a full-time lieutenant governor. I'm going to walk away from my position where, uh, with my company and work for the state full-time. You know, it's a $70,000 a year job. I don't know why anybody would call that a part-time job. And I intend to put my whole heart and soul in it and my expertise, more importantly, my expertise of knowing how to bring tourists here to Clark County and now as the, uh, the commissioner on tourism – the chairman of the Commission on Tourism. I'm going to bring it to the whole state. All right. Sue Loudon is joining me in studio. She's a candidate for the uh, GOP nomination for lieutenant governor. We're going to c- c- come on back. I've got a lot of questions. A lot I asked Mark yesterday. I'm going to ask of you today. And uh, take your calls as well at 257 Katie. Eight twenty at Newstalk seven twenty KDWN. I'm Alan Stock, and I want to thank you so much for joining us on this uh, Tuesday morning. Sue Loudon is a candidate for the GOP nomination for the lieutenant governor slot here in the great state of Nevada. So I, I want to get into three areas I, I, I talked with Mark about yesterday, primarily, and we got already callers wanting to talk to you too. So let me get a couple of my thoughts out. And we'll get to the calls uh, first of all. Um, let's talk about the Obamacare. Because I know you've criticized him for some of his votes. He gave his time to uh, battle Obamacare on behalf of two governors uh, at his own expense back in D.C. in front of the Supreme Court. They lost. And uh, then he came back and uh, and he figured, you know what? I mean, uh, either we're going to control it here in Nevada or the feds are going to control it in Nevada. And so he felt he voted for it to, in order to have uh, us being able to control it on a local basis, at least as bad as it was, at least that's the lesser of evils. What would you have done in that situation? What, how would you have voted? What direction would you have taken? I would have taken the direction that other states have gone where they've reduced the number of Medicaid patients and they have specialized their Medicaid treatment uh, for their states as opposed to standing by what the Obamacare 
uh, expansion of Medicaid says that you have to do. By the way, the Supreme Court specifically ruled that individual states could not be required to expand their Medicaid coverage as part of Obamacare. Our expansion of the welfare system is not only unnecessary, but it's unsustainable and will inevitably come back and haunt we Nevadans for many, many years. I would have gone with what Wisconsin did, with what uh, Kansas did, with um, Florida, where they did their own uh, PPOs and HMOs for Medicaid patients, and they've reduced the number instead of expanding. You know, we had the largest expansion of Medicaid in the history of Nevada. You realize that. And that's what Mark Hutchinson voted for. Without Medicaid, though, what about the rest of the folks who are not in Medicaid? How would you have addressed that? Well, you know, that that's a small part of the population. Me- Medicaid is part of it here, but also you have the Nevada preferred, whatever the heck it's called. You know, the, the so it's, I mean, what, what, then uh, that is supposed to be, cover the people here in lieu of going to the federal Obamacare. So, I mean, what would you have had people do? Well, you know, <laughs> the most important thing to do is to have a job that has coverage. That's the most important thing. This, this whole uh, facilitators and the navigators in the Silver State is a complete failure, Alan. I mean, you know, just because you're even covered now, you're not covered. You see where people are, are suing the state because they thought they were covered, but they're not covered. It's a complete failure. I, no, I, I get that. I understand that. But when you say people have jobs and they could have paid for it, um, I've just got to, you know, uh, let you know, and you, I'm sure you know this already, I know of... Uh, uh, or organizations in town, businesses, chains even, well, I'm not going to mention any names, where people before Obamacare were working 40 to 45 hours a week. I know these people, by the way. It's not just like uh, anecdotal information. I know these people working 40 to 45 hours a week. They had a health insurance. They're now working 29 hours a week with no health insurance. So what would you have done then to help correct that? Two, not 20, that means these people have to work uh, on a part-time job in addition to their 29 hours and they still have to pay for their health care on top of that. Well, one of the reasons why they've been reduced in the hours is because the Obamacare says if you work 30 hours or more, you have to be covered. And so every not everybody, but a lot of people have been cutting back on the hours to circumvent that. We need special insurance policies. We need to have uh, insurance companies without all these mandates, those, these Obamacare mandates, to come in with smaller policies that allow for emergency coverage, that allow for young people uh, to be covered. You know, not one, one policy fits all, which is what Obamacare does. You know, there should be choices out there to make. We need to go across uh, states. You know, there might be a policy in Ohio that some of your friends want to take. We should be able to buy that. These Across are the kind of choices. Yes, these, these are what are... Republicans did suggest, and yes. it was a rejected. Exactly. We got to the floor even uh, during the Obamacare debate. I'm well aware of that. Um, and I understand what you're saying, the business is cutting back because, you know, they don't want to have to pay the health insurance. I, I get that, too. Yes. That I, but still, the people themselves who were, were working 40, 45 hours, now working 20 hours, they're getting screwed. And Absolutely. That, you know, Absolutely. And it's because this of this implementation of Obamacare in our state. It's just um, it's just wasn't necessary. And, you know, the one bill where you get the tax abatement for a million dollars. Yeah, there's that's a wonderful bill. Get it. Get a tax credit if you give a million dollars to the university system. But why did you have to encumber it? was saying that you have to fully comply with the provisions of Obamacare. That has nothing to do with the tax abatement. Okay, one thing and I th- that could have been taken out of the bill, by the way. One thing that I think that you and Mark and I would all agree on is that Obamacare was unnecessary because they could have corrected the problems, as you said, uh, by looking at pre-existing conditions, having people get into pools. Uh, they could have had buying across the state lines and a lot of other things they didn't do. And and, and this is a, a failure of of Congress. And, and, and what happened, this is his legacy, Obama's legacy, and uh, he's going to have to live with it. I think it's going to eventually collapse under its own weight. I hope so. But in the meantime, we have this complete failure in our state of the silver state system. All right. I want to get to the calls, but I've got to get into one more area, too, before we get to the calls of 257-KDWN. Let's talk about uh, Amanda Collins was on my show about two and a half weeks ago or so, and this uh, had to do with a letter that she offered to write on your behalf supporting you because of the uh, CCW uh, support that you would give to Michelle Fiore's bill. Yes. which would allow people to carry on campus, on college campuses, if they have CCWs. Uh, Mark was on yesterday. He said, uh, 
he, he would not tell me why he never answered why he wouldn't uh, co-sponsor it, but he did say that uh, he um, he is a member of the NRA. He, uh, he's a Second Amendment person. He has a CCW. He would have voted for it had it come to the fore. He wanted to know why Sue Loudon, when she was in the state legislature, didn't propose this or sponsor a bill like this in the days before uh, uh, Amanda Collins and Brianna Dennison. What, how do you respond to that? Uh, first of all, I, I brought the bill with me to show that so many Republicans and, and some Democrats supported this bill, and he clearly did not support it and wrote a note to his uh, leader in the Senate saying that he had to think about it, they had to discuss it. This is not for discussion. This is about women uh, being accosted on college campuses, UNR in particular. Uh, one woman, unfortunately, uh, was killed by the same man, and uh, women wanting to protect themselves on, on college so campuses. So why didn't you propose this when you were in the state legislature? We didn't have that problem back then. There, were, there was no one who came forward to say that this was a problem on the UNR or UNLV campus. It was a different time. Uh, it's a, clearly a dangerous place now. And uh, just last week, there was another investigation on a possible rape, an abduction and rape at UNR just last week. So this is a continuing problem. And, uh, you know, we're, we're in uh, 2012 and 2013 now, and 14, where it's a problem. It wasn't in 1995. Uh, so it's changed that much in, in it's 20 19 years. years. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's 20 years that it has changed that much. And uh, this was never brought forth uh, as, a, as a, even a proposal. You know, if someone had approached me back then, I probably would have um, proposed such a thing. But it, it, we, it was a different environment. You've been here for more than 20 years. I've been, I've been, here, here. I've been here 15 years. Yeah, 15 well, years. You know, and, it, and I've watched the, uh, the town evolve oh, even in 15 years. You've been here a whole lot longer than yes, I have. I and have. you've watched it. Uh, go on, and you and I don't know, and I have to take your word for it. In Ninety-five, you're saying that none of these issues were presented, a, at least on the level that they are today. Nothing. I, I heard nothing back then about these kinds of issues on the college campuses. It's a whole different world now, and women are being accosted, and they should be able to protect themselves. Mark Hutchinson did not join with the group that uh, wouldn't wanted to protect women. All right. I, but I want to get across that he is not anti-Second Amendment or anything like that. He is pro-Second That's Amendment. That's what he says. Well, I, no, if you belong to the NRA, you've got to be pro-Second okay. Amendment. Anybody can join the NRA. I belong to the NRA. You probably do, too. So, you know. Anybody can join. Well, uh, I, you know what? Um, I don't you think know, Obama this... belongs. I don't think Barack Obama belongs. <laughs> I just not. have, I that, have that hunch. Uh, you know, 257-KDWN, 257-5396. Sue Loudon in studio with me. She is a candidate for the GOP nomination for lieutenant governor. And uh, we'll take uh, all of your calls coming up in a moment. I know the f- phones are starting to go nuts. We're going to get to all of you. And, again, if uh, Mark Hutchinson wants to call at 835 and to spend a few minutes like Sue did yesterday, he's welcome to do it, too. Money, baby. 838 News Talk 720, KDW, and I'm Alan Stock. Thanks so much for joining us. That's Floyd in the background, Pink Floyd to you. Great to have you with us. And uh, joining me in studio right now is Sue Loudon. She is a, a candidate for the GOP nomination for lieutenant governor. The endorsed candidate by the Republican Party. Right. That is true. That is true. I talked to uh, Mark about that yesterday also because he's endorsed by the governor and you're endorsed by the uh, state GOP. By the, the party. People. By the party. And mm-hmm. right. And uh and, I, and somehow there, there's not an equivalency there in, in, in his mind. And to me, and to me there, I mean, either, you know, either you support endorsements or you don't. And I don't care about them either way. And, and as I said to him, as I say to you, I've never voted for anyone based on anybody endorsing anybody. I, I use my own my own sights and my own thoughts who I vote for. So, uh, you know, but I want people to hear what you have to say today. And we got a million people who want to talk to you now. Isn't so that nice? Yes. L- let's uh, start out with uh, going in the order in which you came, by the way. Jim, you're on the K-Don with Sue Loudon. Go right ahead, sir. Jim? Hello. Yes, sir. Go Alan? right ahead. Quick question or comment, sir. Yeah, Alan, thank you. Sue, question. Can you honestly say that every single vendor, person, entity, or... Um, uh, entity that did business with your last campaign and you and your husband personally for your home construction did not deserve to get 100 cents on the dollar. All right. I'll have you take your answer on the air, and I appreciate your call this morning, Sue. I would say that uh, I would like to know specifically what he's talking about, but um, 
you know, we've been in business for more than 30 years. My husband's been in business for 40 years, and I don't see anybody out there complaining. When you settled your uh, the debt from your campaign, you settled for so much in the dollar. Was that correct? Some of them, yes. All right. And he was saying, I think, do you see that as being okay? And I said that there's nobody complaining. If he's if this gym is a vendor, I'd like to know that. All right. 257-KDWN, 257-5396. Sarah, good morning. You're on KDON with Sue Loudon. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you. I uh, was at the uh, convention this weekend, and I didn't feel like the platform adopted was of the people and was wondering what Sue's stance was and if she supported the party platform as adopted on Saturday. What was it specifically you were looking for, Sarah, in the platform? Um, Mainly in terms of social issues, um, especially in terms of taking pro-life and um, same-sex marriage off the ballot. So the, uh, the fact that the marriage uh, issue and the abortion issue were both basically put to the back burner and taken off, uh, you're upset about that, Sue Loudon? I would say that, uh, you know, first of all, I'm pro-life, and I feel very passionately about that. And it's unfortunate that the majority of the people decided to remove that, not because they're not pro-life, but because they felt it was a wedge issue uh, for the party, and you can still be pro-life, but not have it necessarily on the platform. I wasn't on that platform committee. This came up through all 17 counties, and then there was a big debate uh, at the state level, and the platform committee came up with this platform, and then it was voted on by the people who were there. If Sarah, if you um, were there, you need it more people who felt passionately about the issues that you feel passionately about. I've talked to many pro-life people about this who, who weren't there this weekend, who stayed home, who weren't part of the process. And you need to be part of the process to have a voice. It's not uh, something that was just done in a vacuum. This has been done over the last several months, and uh, you needed to be part of the process to have a voice. All right, Sarah? Sarah? I just feel like if if you say that the party is representative of the people and yet it was just a small percentage of people and those of us who did show up to have a voice still didn't weren't able to do that. I it just it's it's it also frustrates me this endorsement process that's going on just this small group this um committee of people. I would rather take it to a vote uh, in a primary or something along those lines. So it's something that's just frustrating to me in general, and and I and I don't know. It's it's upsetting to a lot of us. Are you going to be uh, influenced by an, an endorsement when you, you vote for anyone? Would you be? You influ- know, after this weekend, I was a little bit put off by the state party, to be honest with you, without having. Um, but when you go to when you go in the booth to vote for someone, do you vote because of who, who endorsed them, or do you vote for them because you did research and you found out that X candidate is the best? Well, I used to put a little bit more faith in the state party, but unfortunately, in the last few years, I haven't been able to do that. So, moving forward, I'm not going to be looking for a specific endorsement. I don't think at this time. All right, I appreciate your call, Sarah. I want to thank you very much. Could I just say though that? that uh, it wasn't a small number of people. There were 500 or some people who voted. We had voting booths that were brought in by the county, and uh, it was done very uh, democratically, frankly, and you had to get more than 50% of the vote to be endorsed. It's my understanding that my opponent didn't even fill out the forms to be endorsed uh, to answer the questions in front of the nominating committee. And I, I'm not sure why he wouldn't do that. It is his party. You know, I've been involved in the party for more than 20 years. I've been involved in fundraising. I've been involved in, you know, knocking door to door for candidates. I've been involved in the central committee. So it was a very um, special moment for me. It was very humbling for me to be endorsed by my party. Uh, I'll tell you, the uh, to me, I, I look at it in a, in a very practical sense. I uh, in, in terms of what they did on, on the ballot, um, like Sarah, I'm also a pro-life. Like you, I am pro-life. I, um, but I also recognize that what the left has been doing for years is using it as a wedge issue uh, by saying uh, the right wants it as a war on women, take away your freedom, and all the yeah, 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 that blabber stuff. Uh, none of it being true. Um, instead, I see us as being pro-life when it comes to lives of, of small, ch- you know, babies Absolutely. in utero. So I, that's, that's how I see it. But uh, to av- to win an election, uh, people like Rand Paul, I think, are smart because instead of concentrating on issues like that, 
uh, like gay marriage and all the other marriage issues. He's talking about what? Freedom and jobs and in the economy. And here's a guy who can actually get a standing ovation at CPAC. Yes. And then two weeks later, three weeks later, get a standing ovation at Cal Berkeley. So you have two extreme, and he can get that kind of, and that is what I think Republicans, if we want to win in 14 and 16, we ought to be taking a cue from that. I happen to like Rand Paul because I think he's a guy who appeals to a broad spectrum of people instead of a narrow group. I'll let you respond in a minute. We'll come on back in a moment and get to more of your calls as well. 257. 849 and News Talk 720, KDWN. I'm Alan Stock, and a good morning. Great to have you with us. Sue Loudon, candidate for the uh, GOP nomination for lieutenant governor, joining me in studio. Got every line lit. I know they want to talk to you. But first, I know you want to say one quick thing that I, you, you were signed. I, I'm going to sign right in front of you. You're going to be my witness. Okay. The Taxpayer Protection Pledge today on tax day. This is the second one I've witnessed today. I did it I for Annette Tijero, and I'm doing it's it for good, you. It's a good day to do it. And I also want to mention that Rand Paul was the uh, winner of the presidential preference poll at the uh, state state convention this past weekend, and I know you're a big fan of his. I, I am because uh, we share a birthday. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I am because uh, I, I think he's the one guy who can actually reach across the aisle as Ronald Reagan was able to do, and I can't think of another national uh, Republican candidate who has that ability. Jeb Bush, I don't think, has the ability. And besides, people are tired of the Bushes, people are tired of the Clintons, the Kennedys, no more dynasties. We want to get somebody f- fresh and new in there, and I can't think of anyone else. Rand Paul has to make the big decision of to walk away from the United States Senate in order to run for president. That is, and, uh, you know, it's unfortunate it's in the same year, but he's got to decide that one way or the other. Uh, Ed, you're on uh, K Dawn with Sue Loudon. A quick question or comment, sir? Yes, uh, according to the Las Vegas Sun, the Hutchinson Law Firm represents uh, brothels and brothel owners. Would that be problematic for someone trying to get jobs from other states and other countries? Oh, I have... He's the brothel barrister. A brothel barrister. I like that. We'll have a Sue take the uh, she'll answer your question while you listen on the air. I, I don't know if he represents brothels either. or not, but I. this is what I do know, Ed, that when I become lieutenant governor, I'm going to walk away from my position and be a full-time lieutenant governor, and I do not think that Mark Hutchinson's going to walk away from his lucrative law firm and be a full-time lieutenant governor. It's a big difference between the two of us. Lynn, good morning. You're on KDON with Sue Loudon. Welcome to the show. Quick question or comment please lynn oh hi this is lynn um yes i, I know just wondering sue if you have any uh idea if we'll ever be able to get the miss america pageant back here in las vegas all right i'll be taking your answer on the air uh will we ever be able to get the miss america pageant back here well you know i uh was instrumental in in dealing with the las vegas visitors and convention authority to bring the pageant here and then it was stolen from us and went back to New Jersey because of all the uh, Hurricane Sandy money that, that New Jersey has. And the governor got intimately involved in that. He wanted that pageant back. So I believe that once that contract is over, we're, we're going to revisit uh, the pageant coming here. It was a wonderful show. It highlighted uh, Las Vegas and Clark County and, and Nevada in a wonderful way. And I would love to have that nationally televised show back here in Las Vegas. And I'll work very hard for that, whether I'm lieutenant governor or not. Melissa, you're on K-Dawn with uh, Sue Loudon. Quick question or comment? Melissa? Melissa once, Melissa twice. You can talk to her if you want off air. Uh, let's uh, get to Brian. Brian, you're on uh, KDON with uh, Sue Loudon. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Quick question or comment, sir. Alan, we'll, we'll argue about who's being disingenuous. You made that claim about my statement yesterday. Uh, only when you this, said, when you used the word I, I, chicken lady. Let's, I, let's argue about that tomorrow. I want to ask Sue something. Sue, when you came on the first of the program today, I was very impressed by who you are and what your credentials are. And I think that is your biggest plus if you're going to win this election and go on and face Ms. Flores, who's being highly backed by Harry Reid and the Reid machine. And I would much prefer that you accentuate the positiveness of who you are and what you bring to the table as the next lieutenant governor, rather than disparaging things about your opponent that I think actually detract, especially the Amanda Collins thing. You know, I I, I, I I want Republicans all to do that, by the way. I watched the Republican debate, of the presidential debate at the Venetian when they was here the last time, and I watched uh, 11 or 12 Republicans up there, and every time one, one of the Republicans would rise, 
they would all the rest would uh, knock that person down, and then the, another one would rise, and they'd all knock him down. Republicans never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. So I agree with you on that, Sue. And I would say, Brian, thank you for for uh, saying that you uh, enjoyed my resume. I wasn't even nearly finished talking about in statute that you are the vice chair of the Board of Economic Development, that you're the president of the Senate. I wanted to go on and on and on, but I was asked these other questions, and so I'm going to talk about these other issues, but I, I didn't bring them up. They were brought up today in the in this interview, but I'd like to talk about my record in the state Senate and being the president of the Senate and how I have had uh, thousands of private sector jobs that I've provided. And in all years. fairness, also, I did bring up the questions uh, because we talked to Mark yesterday about Obamacare and about... Um, uh, what was the hell? The uh, Amanda Collins. Amanda Collins. So I brought those two issues up because we talked about it yesterday. Yes, I did not. Bring and those I didn't up get today. the chance to have the two of them debate in the studio here, so I had to give the questions from each one back and forth. So that's yeah, how we I handled totally it. Understand that? Yeah. I'm just saying, Sue, you you really have a lot to offer, and you have the possibility of winning my vote. Thank you, Brian. Brian, and, it's and good hearing from you. The positive, I appreciate please. your call, Brian. We'll debate the other one some other time, but thanks so much for joining us. 257-KDWN, 257-5396. Stan, you're on KDON with uh, Sue Loudon. Good morning, sir. Good morning, lovely lady. Sue, I've got to ask you a question in regards to lieutenant governor. Is not the lieutenant governor have no power whatsoever in the state of Nevada as as the vice president of the United States that type of situation, and therefore then why all the rhetoric in regards to what you would like to do or could do or whatever, because the only time you would have any power if you win the election is if the governor is out of the state, and what happens if you win and the governorship goes to a Democrat? Okay. Uh, okay. I appreciate your call this morning, uh, Stan. Chance of a Democrat winning the governorship right now is somewhere between nil and minus 5,000. But Well, I would like to say that, and I'm not going to leave these statutes with you, uh, Alan, and so anybody can, can look at them. They're on, they're on the website, but you are the chairman of tourism, and you go around the world, really, and bring people back here to Nevada. That's our number one industry here in Nevada. It's the economic engine that keeps our state going. You are a member of the board of the Economic Development Board, and you help bring businesses here to Nevada. That's by statute. And guess what, Stan? You are the swing vote. When you're the president of the Nevada Senate, you are the swing vote on tie issues. And Brian Krolecki had a number of uh, times that he had to vote uh, to be this the the you know untying the vote. Right. So uh, I think you have a lot of responsibility. Anna, good morning. You're on K Don with uh, Sue Loudon. Quick question or comment. Quick question or comment? Hi, can you hear me? I, yeah, you got to get going. we got a little time. Go. Oh, sorry about that. I, I was a Sue Loudon supporter in uh, 2010 against Sharon Engel, and I really, I still wish she would have won. I know that the, the Reed contributions really hit her, and with the Reed people bringing it up and Sharon bringing it up, but wasn't it just due to, like, a gaming license letter in Illinois? I mean, why don't you just say it was, you know, you contributed to Harry Reed so that you'd get a letter of recommendation for the Illinois gaming license. I've never denied that we, uh, you know, my husband and I both gave money to Harry Reid 25 years ago. I've, I've never denied that. We're in business here in Nevada, and that's the reality. All right, I appreciate your call. I just want to say this, too. I met Harry Reid for the first time 15 years ago when I came here. Uh, he did research on me. I did it on him. I went to a, a remote broadcast one day, a live broadcast, uh, and he was there. We spent an hour talking Second Amendment. We got along very well. And he, at the time, in 99, I thought was a little more representative of the state of Nevada. When he became uh, the head of the Senate on behalf of the Democrats, he became a shill for the Democrat Party. So the Harry Reid we see today is even different than the Harry Reid I knew in 99, certainly different than the Harry Reid probably that you supported 25 years ago. Well, and and to take it back further than that, you know, my old profession was being a reporter and an anchor woman, and I interviewed him when he was a very conservative uh, pro-life uh, pro Second Amendment, um, you know, representative of our state, and uh, that's the person I interviewed many, many years ago. But no, he has, he's, but he's, he's changed. gone through a lot of changes. Yes. If people want to get involved and help you in your your campaign, how can they do it? They can go online, and it's uh, www.sueloudon.com. Sign up. Uh, to be a volunteer, go on my Facebook. Uh, you could send in donations. There's a lot of ways to get involved. I ask you the same question I asked Mark at the end of the show yesterday. You think it was fair today? 
I thought it was tough but fair. I think you're I think you're a tough interviewer. I would have very much liked for Mark to be right here so we could have debated together. Unfortunately, he doesn't want to do that. All right. Uh, as I did said in, I wish you the best. Thank you, sir. And um, we'll get you back in and do it again. I would love to. Absolutely. Uh, Sue Loudon joining us right here on News Talk.